Hello everyone, this is Laura from Discovery Fabric Patterns and today we are going to sew a scrunchie. I've sewn this scrunchie in what's called the burrito style, which is quite simple and has a really nice clean finish. And I've made it with our mulberry silk. The mulberry silk that everyone has been making these fantastic pillowcases from reduces the amount of breakage in your hair. So this is a nice gentle product for you to be able to get your hair out of your face. So today, grab your silk scraps, or any other scrap you want to make a scrunchie with, and come on a little sewing adventure with me. Here I'm using my Ulfa rotary cutter and my Omnigrid ruler to cut this piece of mulberry silk. And I also have a scrap of elastic I'm going to use for the center. I'm going to cut this piece 30 inches long and 5 inches wide. So I'm cutting on the fold here and I'm measuring at 15 inches and at 5 inches wide. If you make this wider or longer, you will have more fabric volume in your scrunchie. If you want less fabric volume, you can make it narrower and shorter. I'm using 5 inches wide and 30 inches long as my measurements here. Once I've trimmed my piece up so it's nice and square and exactly the size I want, then I'm going to measure the elastic. I'm going to make this elastic uh, long enough to comfortably go around my wrist because I often keep a scrunchie around my wrist when I want to be able to put my hair back easily. So I don't want this to be tight around my wrist, but I don't want it to fall off either. So I'm using precisely enough to go around my wrist. And then I'm going to pin this short end right sides together. I'm going to use more pins than I would on most fabrics because silk tends to slip around and not want to stay in place. So the other thing I do with a fabric like silk that's super slippery is I will actually sew right over top of these pins. As I come up to the pins in this seam, you'll notice that I will slow down a little bit and that's just me watching to make sure the needle isn't going to hit the pin itself. If you do hit the pin with the needle, then just change out your needle and keep going. It will dull the tip, so I wouldn't keep going if I hit the pin. But I do find that it is a great way to keep the silk from sliding around on me if I just literally sew right over top of my pins and pin more than I would with less slippery fabrics. So there you go. See, I've sewn right over top of them. And then you're going to trim up our excess threads, keeping it nice and tidy. And then we're going to open out our seam and press it flat. You can press it with an iron. You, you could just press it with a fingernail if you want. I'm using a seam roller here just to get it to stay nice and flat. See, there you go. I'm using my thumbnail. That's probably good enough, but I'm going over it with the roller anyway. Now for the burrito part. I find the opposite side of my loop from the seam and I fold it a couple of times to make it narrower. And then I'm going to actually encase it in the other side of the loop. So here I am putting that seam right sides together with that folded up bit encased inside. And I'm going to start my seam right there, right sides together where that short seam already is. So I do a little tack back so it stays in place and I just keep sewing, making sure that I'm not sewing over top of the fabric that is inside of my little burrito here. And so right up to the edge there, making sure I don't capture the fabric underneath. And then when I get to the point where I can't sew anymore, I pull my little burrito out. I'm using a little pair of tweezers here just to grab it because it makes it a little easier. But I'm literally just pulling it through the center. And then once I've pulled it through the center, I tuck it back in and I keep going. And you keep going all the way around like this. So I've continuously pulled it through and stitched and pulled it through and stitched until I get to the point where I can see the beginning of the seam. So there's where I started stitching that seam allowance down and I'm going to stitch up to about two inches from the start of my seam, leaving a little two inch opening for turning later. And then I'm going to back stitch a tiny bit and take it out of the machine. There you go, little gap. So this funny little tube. And now we put the elastic in. 
So you can use a bobkin or whatever you like to thread it through. I grabbed a safety pin because that was the closest thing to me. So there's my little opening. I'm not going in there. I'm going in the end of this little slinky tube. So I'm going right in the end and I'm feeding my elastic through my little inside out tube here. Once I've got it all the way through the middle, making sure that my elastic isn't twisted, I'm going to pop that safety pin out, get it out of the way, and I'm going to sew the two ends of my elastic together. I'm going to sew two lines and I'm going to go over each of those lines two or three times just to make sure it's nice and secure because this seam will take a lot of pressure. You're going to put it under tension so you want to make sure it's nice and secure. It's also nice and short, so it doesn't take long to go over it a few times. So that's my first line. I've gone back and forth over it a few times. I'm going to do a second line just to keep the elastic nice and flat and make sure that it is extra secure. So there we have it. And then again, we trim up our threads to keep things nice and tidy. And now we turn it right side out. So now I find that little gap. And I reach into the little gap. I'm going to use my little tweezers again, just because it's easier. Get a hold and pull that out. And now I'm going to turn the whole piece right side out. So I just keep pulling it through until it is all the way right side out. There you go. Now you can see it looks pretty finished. The only thing we have left to do is to close that little opening there. Now, if you want, since you're sitting at the machine, it's very easy to just tuck in your ends, get it to sit nice and flat, and you can just edge stitch right there with your machine. Now I currently have white thread in my machine and I think it's gonna show pretty badly on this sage silk, so I've decided that I'm going to do a cleaner finish, which is using a hand needle and a ladder stitch. So I've tied a knot in the end of my needle and I slip it in right where that machine seam ends. And then I simply pop it back and forth using, this is, this is a ladder stitch, but really it's just a, a little hand stitch where I go in beside it on the other side, come up, pull through, go back and forth and keep going until you've closed the whole gap. Once I've closed the whole gap, I'm going to tie a little knot. Here my tail is trapped in there and I don't want it caught in the knot, so I'm just going to pull my tail of my thread through. There we go. Finish tying my knot so I don't lose my thread. I'm going to take one little anchor stitch so I can bury my tail and leave a little tail on the thread without leaving it hanging out and showing. And normally I would trim this with scissors but they're not handy so I'm just going to use my rotary cutter. There we go. Trim my thread and look at that. And there you have it. We've made a scrunchie using the scrappy little bits left over and now I can finally get my hair out of my face just like that there you go happy sewing